Alright, uh, so welcome to the octo finals of the first China BP 2012, hosted by BLCU Beijing. Uh, well, good morning, my name is Noel, I'm your chair. This is Hei Wan, uh, and also this is Anthony, who will be your edge panel for today. So, in this octo finals, opening government, we have Jelly B. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Closing government, we have the Zinger. Yeah. 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 Opening opposition, Zumbo, oh, Zumbo, <laughs> Zumbo and Dina, water debaters, sorry, water debaters. Closing opposition, we have CAU4. Yeah. Hey. Alright, the start of the debate, uh, I could call this house to order and invite the Honourable Prime Minister yeah. to start. Powerful, um, uh, it's the most powerful of 
association concerning all kinds of trading and um, all kinds of trading in this whole world. It has the most power and it has the most respons responsibility and duty to ensure that all trades are uh, existing in a good environment, in an environment right. and that everybody, that all, all industries and companies are, are existing and acting in a fair and racism-free way. So, um, uh, so it is, there, there, is no, there is no doubt that ICC has the responsibility to put a stop to this hate speech, which, in, which, as we, which there is no doubt really abuses this kind of, um, these, these kinds of religious and people. Of no, thank you. Um, and um, so now we are clear with the aim of ICC is to create a world of trade which, is, which, has, which has no kind of racism and no kinds of, um, no, no kind of ill ideas or, um, or hatred to any kind of religions. We, have to, uh, we can um, come to the conclusion that um, hate speech should be, uh, should be stopped uh, and ICC has the responsibility and has the power to prosecute this kind of hate speech. So, um, um, okay, you. Uh, in what words that this ICC is existing, and how does hate speech actually influence the trades we're talking about? Okay, let me give you an example. First of all, if you are a, a if you are an industry that you sell pork, and as we all know that Muslim people do not eat pork, so are you actually go, are you actually going yeah. no thank you are you actually going to hate um are you you're actually going to make a hate speech concerning all those Muslim people because they don't they don't buy what they sell no thank you. No, thank you. So, um, so, so now we have. So, as we all know, that um, ICC is responsible for all kinds of trading and is responsible for all for uh, for uh, for um, for trading that 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 is um, racism free and um, and is fair to all, all industries and companies. Um, that now we um, so um, let's come to the conclusion that. ICC has the responsibility, responsibility to create, create a friendly, uh, to create a friendly world and make sure that all industries cooperate peacefully and fairly. So, um, and and as we all know that the people who believe in any kind of um, that, that who be, be, um, believe in religions is a majority of our world. Nearly all of the Europeans and uh, and all the Muslims and um. And, and the Christi Christianities, they take a, a, a large amount of all our of all our people. So, um, so ICC had um, should have uh, should be responsible for the happiness and happiness and fairness for a majority. So, um, um, th that that is my two arguments supporting our point and a part of the post. Thank you. My thanks to the Prime Minister. I'm moving on to side. Opposition, opening opposition's leader of all. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know in which world is this organization of international com like commission of uh, sorry chamber of commerce, right? Uh, as we all know, ICC stands for International Criminal Court. And that's when we want to prosecute the people, like some people, because it's a court that can prosecute. Yeah. Even if it is a chamber, how can a chamber prosecute someone? We were totally confused, right? So in this debate, we basically want to talk about these number of issues, right? And the first, we want to respond to them, right? Even if this debate is about international chamber of commerce, why they are not doing whatever they're claiming to. And secondly, what happens to ICC International Criminal Court, why International Criminal Court isn't really the right body to do so, right? So quickly, onto their case, right? What exactly is a trade group or a trade organization? I assume that they were talking about, for example, things like WTO. But since if you look at WTO, they can't even resolve their own conflict inside of trade in their Doha round, whatever it is. So what happens is that how come that a trade organization can have an effectiveness in dealing with hate speech, such an important issue? We agree to a certain extent that hate speech is wrong. Yes, that part we concede. 
but we don't agree that ICC, as in their own definition, can deal with the issue. Even if you can stop trading, hate speech will still exist. Even if, like, actually, the fact that you stop trade with each other, the fact that actually these producers don't like each other, creates even more hostilities towards these two, like, religion or towards these two groups of people. One group hate each other even more, even more so in this case. We will elaborate more on this case when we're discussing about closure, even in the context of the International Criminal Court, why closure and by punishing, we can't actually achieve anything. Because once you start to punish, in your case, punishing with trading, that's when the other side feel that, see, I am the victim. That's exactly why I want to hate you. That's exactly why I want to criticize you and abuse you verbally, right? But Next, move on to ICC, International Criminal Court. Right? We need to understand, because this debate is inherently international, we're not talking about individuals inside of a country having a hate speech against someone else, which is already punishable by domestic laws, like inside the countries when there are many different religious groups that is interacting. What we see in the status quo, there was a problem of once one country actually commit hate speech uh, towards another religious group. For example, when Ahmadinejad say that Israel is wrong and we want to wipe Israel out of the earth, we hate Jews, right? That kind of hate speech, when that is done, is currently not punishable, right, in the status quo. Because no organization, no international organization can ever do so. International Criminal Court was set up in the very first place to deal with such kind of situation, for example, like war crimes, right? When one country attack each other. We thought that maybe the government side is trying to hint on that, right? The motion is trying to hint on that in saying that this is similar to war crime. But clearly, this is not. So I want to like elaborate this issue under three, like our side wants to under, evaluate this issue under three different levels. First, is ICC a fair arbitrator in such kind of like, uh, it, like disputes between different countries, different groups, different religion? Secondly, even if it is fair, can we achieve closure and stability in long-term state building process, long-term friendship that actually contribute to peace? And thirdly, even if we can achieve closure, can we in the very first place capture these individuals we want to prosecute and truly prosecute these people, right? Well, our third point will be discussed by Athena, my partner. I'll mainly focus on the first two points, right? In the very first place, what is ICC? We see ICC being very weak in the very first place. Right? When ICC said we want the Sudanese president uh, Omar Abashah, we can't actually get him. Yet, there's an even bigger issue. It's not really about his weak. It's that there are judges who are appointed mainly from the Western world. Right? When we're talking about the perspectives in ICC and what kind of judgment we're going to make, we see clearly it's much more likely as bias. What's the reason that it's much more likely bias? Because ICC depends on the fact that countries signing the treaty to agree to ICC ruling are countries who actually obey the rulings of ICC, instead of other countries who are not signing their treaty in the very first place. So what happened is that we're, we're, we're stuck in a situation where ICC actually have very leg, like small legitimacy and very small power. But ICC don't have their own legal enforcement to go into any place to prosecute any person, to take that person and to actually make that person punishable and punish with a certain sentence or crime. They say that kind of situation makes it very doubtful, right? When hate speech happened, what exactly is the reason why hate speech happened? Say, again, right, my, my, my example of Ahmadinejad saying that we hate Jews. There is already a long-standing conflict between Jews and the Muslims, right? When the Muslims don't think Jews are doing the right thing, seeing the Jewish settlement on the West Bank of like Jordan River, yet when the Jews feel that their own land was taken away by Muslims, we felt that these two groups have inherent reasons hating each other, right? Even when in this case, if Israel is saying we want to prosecute like, like Ahmadinejad, we bring this case to International Criminal Court. Like, even if it is okay for them to do so, how will the Iranian feel? They will exactly feel that, yes, Israel, you are now prosecuting our leader despite all your wrongdoings. 
if this kind of prosecution can actually be done, right? We see hate speech being punished. Now, Iranian people will feel that, see, this is how bad Jewish are even getting even worse, right? That's when there are even more tension between these kind of countries and state interest groups. That's when these kind of problems will never be solved, when these hostility escalate, and we might see not only like, like leaders cursing at each other, but more of like terrorism, more of like all out wars between countries, because these two countries start to hate each other in great skill. What will be better? Right? That's my second point exactly. Closure. Right? How do we seek closure? We agree that hate speech needs to be stopped. But hate speech can't, it can only be stopped when both sides start to understand each other. We need to seek yeah. for a, a, a situation where the two sides can start to understand each other. Maybe it's true that the Jews don't like the Muslims and the Muslims don't like the Jews. Fine, we can live with that. But the only way that we can do so is by giving both sides a say and say, you can express what you like, but I also have the right to defend for myself. We can argue, we can rebut, we can have trade, we can have normal relations. That's when we see Daniel Barenboim, right? When they are organizing this kind of east-west orchestra between Israel and Palestine, we see people communicating with each other. We see this kind of communication happening instead of when in hostility, two sides cannot communicate, two sides cannot build friendship at all. We stand for closure. We don't like ICC to intervene. My thanks to the leader of opposition. Now moving back again once more to Jelly Bean, Open Government Deputy President. Okay, thank you, speakers, and thank you all. First, I will give some rebuttal. Order. The leader of opposition said that ICC is weak. It may be it, the ICC does not have the enough power to maybe to go to one country and maybe catch some people to the to some place to punish it. But well, if if ICC didn't doesn't do that, so who and which organization? can to do so. Yes, we know that, as the leader of opposition said, the Jews and the Muslims are hate, them, hate, hate each other, and they are all attack each other. So there are many countries, they are not the same country, they have the different government. So do you think that some European country will punish their own citizens because the citizens uh, said something or said something hate the uh, Muslims. I don't think so. So, Sir. No, thank you. So, how can we do that? We need an international organization to deal with this problem. And the, uh, nation, the native government could, will not uh, solve this problem. So that's why we need ICC to uh, prosecute the, the hate speakers. And the second one is about the... Oh. Sir, you say European Union don't punish their own people. But we saw, for example, like crimes as like a Holocaust denial, for example. When you deny Holocaust, we can prosecute you. This is exactly how European Union deal with its own hate speech inside of own, like, uh, own territory. But that's the not... Um, happens very uh, occasionally and uh, that is that is why between two countries so the each government won't well disagree with each other and they are the Jews and they are the Muslims and they are against each other so we need an international uh, organization to solve the problem and well my uh, let's go move on to my argument as we all know the whole world should be peaceful and should be a uh, we, we always said the uh, one world, one dream, so we are the whole family. And so why should, how can we uh, make the hate speech against the religions? Well, because if one hate speech appears and, and it is not be, uh, uh, be punished, and what will happen then? More, more hate speeches against the will appear and against the, that hate speech. For example, some Muslims said that well, some, something bad about the Jews and the Jews will, more Jews will say bad things about the Muslims. Okay. In a Muslim
Muslim society and or in a Western liberal democracy country, we have different standards for what's taught or what's acceptable and what's not. Why are we imposing a universal standard instead of yeah, let yeah. people express their opinions? No. You have the freedom to, you have the right to be uh, some religion, religions, and you also have the right to not to be religious. But you do not have the right to attack some other religions because, as my partner said, they believe the God and they think God is the whole world. If you attack God, they will maybe be so angry that could they will do the to kill someone, say bad things to her, and that's the thing can happen. And what will happen if we do uh, prosecute the hate speech? And what will happen if we do not to try to stop the hate speech? I, I think, in any ways, we could not allow the hate speech appear in the world because everyone has their rights to be the religious and uh, they also can have the right to not be the religious, but they do not have the right to attack them. And uh, so, what we, I want to say is, we all agree that the hate speech should be stopped. And uh, how can we stop that? By the uh, native government? I don't think so, because the government won't punish their citizens because they attack the, or they give hate speech to another country's citizens. Because the government are, are the government are care about their own country, but not the other countries. Sir, okay. why International Chamber of Commerce, as you said, can achieve all these things that you want to argue? Why is it a debate about International Chamber of Commerce? Oh, that's okay. And we all know the trade or the commercial activities must be done in an equal and peaceful environment. And uh, however, the hate speech, well, uh, against the religions, must break the rule, must break the rule and destroy the whole peaceful and the equal environment. Right? If the if one hate speech appear and more and more hate speech will appear to against it. That is what will happen. So the whole peaceful and uh, equal environment was be destroyed. And so ICC, as the international organization who cancel, who the only organization can solve this problem, it, it has no thank you. It has the rights and the duty to do so. That's why we think that ICC should do that and uh, oh, yeah. well. and also about about the uh, uh, hate speech against the religions because we do not if you are a Jesus you do not anyone to attack your attack the God right you do not want anyone to say God is a foolish man or something like that you will be angry and that is that will this well that will make you angry and you, the most people face that problem, will attack the attackers too. So that makes come and go and come and more and more hate speech, speeches happen. And that maybe will become some violence crime because they are not, they cannot uh, be they can not only solve their problems by their mouth, so they maybe can uh, beat them or cause the war, who knows? So that is something that could be happening to, because we want the whole world to be peaceful and be the equal world. So we should stop the hate speech against the religions, and that is ICC should do. Thank you. My thanks to the Deputy Prime Minister now again. Uh, op opening opposition, Deputy Leader. Well, saying the government side still fails to answer my partner's question, why ICC? The Chamber of Commerce will actually solve the problem in terms of hate speech, in terms of, of ethical conflicts, when it can fail to deal with its own field of trade. We, we, strongly, 
We strongly think this is a, uh, this debate has no clashes at all because the international uh, international uh, chamber of commerce actually don't exist at all. So that is why we think that our side take the wrong uh, their side take the wrong case, and we are moving to the right direction of the international criminal court about those things. We believe the best way to solve conflicts between ethical groups is through the, the, the in-house mutual understanding and high tolerances with each other. Instead of escalating the conflict with the anti-Jewish or the anti-Israel sentiment already at a high by, forcing, uh, by enforcing a universal standard judging to those gr different groups who have a totally different believing system than our secular state. So that is why we say, as my partner closing tells you, ICC as a very biased, uh, as a very biased situation, uh, uh, organization will never be the perfect one to solve the conflict. And today, I'm going to extend my partner's um, speech. I'm going to tell you why this kind, this kind of ICC won't work, won't, cap, won't be able to capture the so-called um, uh, the criminals they have presented. Secondly, even if they have captured those uh, uh, those criminals as soon, we don't think that will uh, that's the best way to go. Firstly, talking about why it is impossible to capture, you have to imagine that people uh, like the president in uh, president of Iran, he, they, he is a spiritual leader. He always declared that he wants to wipe out the Israel out of us. But this person, spiritual leader which means that he has the most power in his hand. He has the most secure protection, most advanced equipment, that enhancing security and security. We don't think that the ICC has the ability to really, uh, to, to really able to find this person's location and capture that. Because the nature of this ICC is an organization that is signed by a group of countries and it don't has a legal, it don't has a very strong military power, which means that the legal enforcement won't that strong, won't that workable. Secondly, we say right. that when even if you want, you decide to find how weak ICC is, you want to empower that, you want to capture that. We think that if you really want to tore down and capture this leader, it means that you have to fight against the regime behind that. What it means. If you really want to capture, you have to fight against every supporters of that re of that leader, which means that it's all out war between this group of people, all those uh, countries, and the ICC troops. We don't think right. this is the right way way to go when you are escalation escalating the conflicts between this group of people and letting the people in, of Iran continuously suffering from the hands of war. We think closure is the best way to go, especially when we're talking about South Africa, the truth and reconciliation council. There is exactly in the benefits of the people for the long term building council for all the people that we should do it in this way. Secondly, why we say even if you are suddenly uh, ICC are so powerful to capture this kind of uh, uh, this um, these leaders, it still cannot solve the problem. Firstly, we are talking about ICC. It already has its weak authority. The only way that you can in in enhance your legal enforcement is by uh, you to by have better equipped militaries to have be with better authorities for that. We think that. This kind of authority that you, if you really want to carry out, should be higher than the authority of those individual countries, which already say that it is higher than the sovereignty of the country that you are imposing your own standards towards that specific country. Does it really necessary for us to have such a world government to govern, to dictate every individual on this planet, regardless of the differences of their cultural backgrounds, of their religious backgrounds, and everything else? We don't think that is the right way to go. Secondly, we say that ICC is, um, as, as my partner already mentioned, is the signature of nations. If it, it suddenly becomes so powerful as a kind of world government, the, the countries dare not join. For what? If they, their beliefs contradict with their beliefs of the majority memberships. For what? They are the ones side of this country. For example, for they have to follow the rules set by the ICC. And every possible time that ICC can find any rules that 
uh, go against its standards, sending troops to our country. We don't think that those countries dare to join. We don't think that this kind of representation of equality really exists. You are pushing the ICC to an even more biased, more and more biased situation. You are putting the world into a narrow, uh, na uh, more and more narrow scenario in terms of understanding and tolerance of those groups. Go. So if we do not put this issue on the international level, that means we have to keep this in the domestic level. So what did you, what do you think that in the domestic level it would be more biased than the international perspective? So we don't think that we will let the issue drop to the domestic level. We just don't think that ICC is the right person, uh, the right institution, right actor to act. You still have many other alternatives. For example, negotiations, peaceful talks. We also can have this kind of pressure from the outside by uh, letting uh, all kinds of bilateral talks, uh, offer, uh, uh, arranging all kinds of committees solving this problem. We also can have this kind of projects that target to enhance the mutual understanding of, of, country, uh, of people from both countries. For example, as my partner told you, that have these kinds of NGOs that um, uh, gather two uh, people together, really they then decide and arrange a lot of activities for them to communicate, to come together and understand each other from this set. Uh, Mr. Speaker, what I told you. Firstly, that this kind of act, this kind, uh, this kind, uh, this kind of hate truth, a speech, will never be solved simply by the Bias adjudicator like the uh, ICC members will be uh, uh, seen. Secondly, we need to talk about the, the enforcement and the military power of ICC makes it really hard to really capture the leaders, really hard to have its uh, target end at promoting the welfare of all people. Even if it's really able to capture, it will create a more chaotic situation Well, the world become narrower and narrower, following one single standard. We are proud to oppose. My thanks to the yellow for their speech. Uh, we move on to the closing house, closing house debate with closing government member Bell. Good morning, Mr. Speaker and ladies and gentlemen. From the speech from Athena, she always said, okay, there's no uh, legal uh, military power of ICC to solve this problem. But I will illustrate and rebut this point in my first constructive point about how, what is the ICC? When is ICC entitled to solve this problem when dealing with the international conflict, especially FII, in this case, religion conflict? For example, ladies and gentlemen, because their logic is quite simple. First, they, John Ward told us that is that, <coughs> Mr. Speaker, today we are sharing a common goal that we want peace and we want to solve the religion religious conflict in this case. But still, why John Ward told us that I failed to prove that why I can't really do it? Their reason number one is about. ICC is not a fair arbitrator because the judges is, is from mainly from Western liberal democracy country and they have the biased decision. But Mr. Speaker, now they let's think of what is happening in the Second World War. In the ICC, actually the judges come from different countries, which is really strongly related to that issue, also representing the benefit of this country. How if this is so biased, how this how could ICC solve the problem by sentencing the international criminals that effectively during World War II? Sorry. And, and Mr. Speaker, let's come about our go uh, opposition to the worst kind of, of the hate speech is like, like racism, genocide, and it's like they are claiming to wipe up some uh, 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 some ways. But the problem is, uh, Mr. Speaker, actually this hate speech exists everywhere, which means it's a normal cases like expect for I. Again, John will show us the, the, uh, the, the cases uh, in Saudi Arabia. But I would love to draw a knowledge of what's happening in Saudi Iran. And actually, this kind of conflict is not just because the conflict between the two countries. Actually, it's a, con uh, a conflict between different two, uh, uh, two mindset or, or, or idea about, about the religion. Which means that actually, for example, in the Israel and Iran case, it's the whole uh, Islamic League versus the Jewish people. So the, so, so the point is that we really need a really powerful and effective 
uh, uh, organization like ICC, we should approve why we will be really effective in this case to solve this problem in the first place. And secondly, is that I really want to illustrate more about the procedure, how the function, how is the function of ICC. Mr. Speaker, Athena tell me that, okay, they have legitimate power to capture these uh, spiritual leaders. But Mr. Speaker, let's think about ICC was never the people who captured the criminals. It was the country who were deeply harmed, who was really affected by certain issues, especially Second World War II, who find these brilliant so, leaders exactly. and sent to ICC. Yes, again, they will capture them. Maybe this military action is against the, the opinion of, the, the, uh, 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 of their supporters. But Mr. Speaker, that's what's happening in Libya. Is that when is, when is we killing and trying to capture Gaddafi? Because this issue is about the whole the whole, uh, issue of uh, of that region, which means actually a different kind of country. When we find sure. it's necessary to stop certain necessary to stop certain uh, kind of conflict, that we always have power to find someone to have enough military equipment to find someone or to stop the, the cases. But secondly, I would love to, to move to the next level. Why this ICC will work, Mr. Speaker? Let's think about when we're dealing with the. Uh, uh, a great religious conflict. What's the best way? It's like they said they've never captured. But the Mr. Speaker, the point is like, how come you let these people still fighting among each other and let them talk and kind of provide a platform for them to understand each other, Mr. Speaker? It's never an end if we don't capture them or stop them by sanctioning them, by setting them and lock them in some some. So maybe lock locks room to let them stop the conflict at the very beginning. Because the, f the first thing is that in the first level, I really want to picture which kind of spiritual leaders we are trying to stop. The problem is that this kind of spiritual leaders, like for example, the, the president of Saudi Arabia, some some country or whatsoever, is such a strong strong power in affecting their citizens by provoking and inciting their citizens to fulfill their goal to kind of wipe out different races. So that's the what what I want to illustrate, Mr. Speaker. That's why God is so powerful. If we never stop them from inciting their people, we never stop them by provoking different countries, by inevitating the conflict among this country. What is the end of this conflict? What is the start of solving this problem? A second layer is like, Mr. Sure. Speaker, I believe that it's an easier, easier way to for us solve this problem by stop this uh, provoking uh, leaders in the very first place by capturing them and lock them in some room in the first place. But second, I will illustrate more is like, Mr. Speaker, let's think about the, the another angle of the is, this issue. Is that what is the best way to solve the religion conflict? Is that we let them still exist in the society or just we uh, stop them in certain a a area and provide a better platform? Mr. Speaker, today is that when we're solving this, uh, we always have to think about the effectiveness of whether we can do it, and which is also illustrated from Athena's speech. Exactly to the point that why it's not effective, we can't capture it, you know, uh, it's not equipped enough and not, uh, not legal, it, it just makes have the power to capture these people. So I will show that actually ICC, when there's a special time, when this country will be a different country, actually they will be kind of legally equipped and have the right to deal with the people. Because Mr. Mm -hmm. again, Last this chapter. region, regional conflict is not just about between two countries, normally it's within a different country in the world. It's never the country between two, uh, between two countries. Country. And second is that actually if you when we stop this conflict but no there's no someone who provoking the uh, inciting their citizen. That's why how we start to put them in the table by negotiating what is the best way. Because we believe that when we're solving the international um, religion conflict, it's really hard for us to stop the hate speech. Because the hate speech always reject our uh, original from this powerful spiritual leader. So that's why we believe that if we cut the origin of this provoking, incitive and racism, uh, it's a better way for at first beginning. And secondly, only if you capture them and lock them up, stop this message, and force them to talk on the table, then we can talk, uh, I say, how to by sentencing them, how to do a uh, do, uh, uh, sanction this, in this country and in a better way, by negotiation, by political dialogue. Mr. Speaker, let's think about what is the best way by solving the international conflict. I'm glad to oppose. <laughs> <clears throat> My thanks to the member of government. Now moving on to CAU4, closing opposition. Member of
chairperson. We believe in this debate, the opposition have two steps of burden to prove. Firstly, whether um, hate speech against religions is an international recognized crime, and B, whether ICC is a justified actor to deal with this kind of problem. But as for, we think open government is clearly out of the debate because they give the wrong definition and they continue to be wrong and we don't like substantiate materials. Opening opposition then will deal with the problem of the second step, whether ICC is justified actor. But for the closing opposition, what we are going to extend in this debate is about the first step of the burden, why hate speech against religions is a international recognized, uh, should be an international recognized crime or not. But before that, I'm going to do some several uh, rebuttal to the closing government's case. We think firstly, they talk about you know, uh, if uh, the ICC should show the responsibility to, to deal with the problem of genocide, so why not show the responsibility to deal with the problem of hate speech against religious? Firstly, ladies and gentlemen, we think genocide is different from the hate speech against religions. Genocide and massive killing and massacres are some, some things, some crimes that we internationally agree. Why? Because we agree that they are those kind of crimes against basic, against basic human rights, right? The right to life. We think the right to life is the most fundamental thing uh, the international, uh, in, uh, in the international arena and universal agree. We think these kind of things is just uh, should, should not be like be compared with the topic we are talking about today. Secondly, you know, um, they talk about you know the leader speech is so harmful because it will incite people's anger to others and thus will cause war and conflicts, right? But the problem is, a we think that. You cannot just say for sure a leader's power is so powerful to affect people's like, actions, right? Even if like Ninja has has like called for uh, can has say declared to the world we should wipe out is a really in the world. But so what, right? Not not that like serious conflicts are happening in the world. Not that much people are killing. We don't think it's pose such huge influence now. Secondly, we like to talk about something about backlash, right? If their policy is implemented, if we capture these kind of leaders and sentence them, right? The thing is, it will incite people more to like fight against, to uh, to start more conflict. Because the people they believe, right? The, the people they believe as a follower, as a leader, yeah, yeah. is going to is going to be captured and act actually this kind of backlash will incite more people to start more conflict because they, they are humiliating these people more by like capture and sentence more the people they trust most. Perhaps the, pe the speech of the pe people they trust most to oppose this kind of important like uh, harm, uh, important like uh, effect on them. But the, when you capture them, the people is disappeared. It will be more like damaging and devastating to this kind of situation. So. The burden I'm going to bring to you, thank you, is about whether hate speech against the religious religions should be an international recognized crime. So the first question we want to answer is whether the uh, what is the international recognized crime, right? For example, we think uh, they have have to meet some standard to be a some criteria, right, to be an internationally recognized crime. Firstly, we think it should violate the very fundamental right of the people, which the uh, uh, the, fun, the right, uh, the right of this, uh, the justification of this kind of right is universally agreed. For example, the right to life, without which we cannot live, it is universally agreed. For example, perhaps the right to security, right? In a lot of cases, uh, the people, no, thank you, don't do it. Especially within the uh, international crime, about the very first level of the right to life, when people are starting a massive uh, killing in the things. Especially when the government cannot deal with it, then we deal with it internationally. Especially for the leaders of the government, right? Secondly, we think it should pose a direct and tangible physical harm to the people, right? We think it should, and this harm has to be sure, right? When the government leader is starting a war, it is starting a something which is very damaging, uh, starting a war, right? This is going to pose a direct in, uh, harm for sure for a lot of pe people in the society. But hey, but let's talk about more on hate speeches, right? Why it is not meeting uh, with this kind of criteria? Firstly, we think we there's no for sure like uh, 
tangible and physical harm you are trying uh, to guarantee, right? No, thank you. But then, by speaking to others, right, by posing this kind of sentiment or like emotions to others, kind of guarantee that uh, this kind of like two parties going to take action at the end of the day, right? So in this kind kind of case, we don't see the tangible harms for you guys to pose to others. Secondly, I'm going to talk about no thank you things about freedom of speech. We think um, because freedom of speech is not like uh, does not have a universal standard for this, right? We, as my partner has first pointed in her POI, we don't have because states just in are in different forms. States are in different ideologies, right? The the uh, the limit of freedom of speech they have draw the line they have draw are different, right? For example, in liberal countries, in liberal states, the lines are quite range. The range are, are, are quite wide. But in some <coughs> countries who are conservative, the rights could be limited more. But we don't think we have a, a standard, like uh, we have a, a universal criteria to agree on which line should we draw at, on this kind of freedom of speech. Which line should we draw at the freedom, uh, at the uh, hate speech against this kind of uh, um, uh, religious religious states. For example, perhaps in religious place, right? A slow, a small like word, for example, fuck, fuck you, uh, Allah, or something. This kind of thing, <laughs> it, 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 it's kind of should be uh, should kind of be sentenced to death. But in different kind of places, uh, we think this uh, like <laughs> anyway. But in, in, in liberal countries, for example, like European countries, the things the situations might be different, right? So we think we. For the International Court of Justice, especially when you're sentenced, uh, taking some criminals to sentence for internationally, we have to have, we should have a universal standard for that, universal criteria for that, to recognize to which extent we should sentence them, to which extent we should punish them. So, for the very justice, the principle of justification, we're very proud to oppose. My thanks to member of opposition for that speech. Now we move onwards to GovWeb and closing government. Honorable judges and my fellow speakers, good morning. And I want to divide my speech into two parts. In my first part, I'll be introducing two rebuttals, especially to the uh, arguments mentioned by the member of the government, and uh, um, member of the opposition. And secondly, I'll be summarizing the whole debate under one clashes. Okay. Uh, there's two things I want to talk. I want to talk about uh, regarding the arguments mentioned by member of the opposition, and that is, it seems that they do not have one clear concept, and that is, what will be the so what will be the difference when one issues is put on the international level? So let's see what they talk about in the, in the first point, and that is, they believe that this crime. The crime of hate speech should not be taken, should not be considered international crime. And that and their main reason is that they see, they think that this hate speech does not provoke any tangible harm. But however, we see that this is not the case. So actually, the nature of religion is that this religion is characterized by strong belief. And this strong belief is even more powerful than the self-control, in the, the self-control of the individual in the existence of the law, of domestic law. So which means that, I'm sorry, which means that, for example, if one individual in one country he presents a hate speech and against the religions in another country, the most possible coming out result is that it provokes hatred, it provokes disorder in those countries because those religion, those people who believe in religion, when they're I'm sorry, when they're insulting in their religious belief, they are, they might see, there might be a poss high possibility for them to overreact, and the possible and the most possible outcome sorry, result is that I'm sorry, is that they will break the social order of that country by going out to the streets for parade. And this is what the government of here, another country, do not want because it, it is harmful to the stabilization of the society. So we see that in this aspect, hate speech does have tangible harm. And in the case, any any and in the hypothetical scenario I have just descri described, and I have I have shown you that one hate the, the hate speech uh, in one country against the religions in other countries is invoking so they possess tangible harm. So we see that. 
So we see that this crime, this hate, hate speech, has tangible harm, and this tangible harm is is inter could be international. So we, so I think that their arguments, so their belief that this crime should not be considered an international crime is not justified. I'm sorry. And second, they are considered the freedom of speech. They consider that everybody has the freedom of speech, and the main reason they give, and the main reason, and the main reason they think why we shouldn't. So why we shouldn't put this issue, issue on international level is that they think there are different standards in different countries regarding how they understand the freedom of speech. However, we agree on this point, we agree this is fact, but what we are concerning is that these different standards in different countries is bringing the conflict among different countries. And this is why we are especially concerned, and this is why we need an international, we need an international institution to handle, to arbitrate all these conflicts, and that is why we think it's justified that we, uh, we, in, we incorporate an international institution to handle all these all this conflicts. Okay, my, uh, my second part, say? yes. Okay, it is exactly because there is conflict in the social background, that's why they have hate speech in the very first place. You remove Gaddafi in Libya, yet there is still chaos. You remove Bin Laden from Taliban, yet they still have strong power. Why? Yeah. Yes, they so those hatred, those still evolve. But what we're doing now is that we want we want to do more effort to handle. But what you are proposing is that we leave this problem unsolved, we, which we do not agree. So we think that we have to spend effort, effort in solving all this problem. Sorry. And I think the whole debate revolves around this one very important issue, and that is whether the ICC could be effective on the issues of hate speech. So let's look at what the opening opposition has brought to you as the reasons. So firstly, they think that it's, uh, firstly they think the opening government, the first speaker of the opening opposition, says that the, all, all those judges they are coming from Western world. So it might probably so it might possibly be the ICC could be could not be so it could be biased. But however, what they have proved is that this so this policy might not be perfect. But however, so when we are evaluating the justifications of a new policy, which is not perfect. Which is not perfect. The criteria we are so the criteria we consider is not whether this policy is, is perfect, but whether this policy could make things better. So when, in my POI, I have to raise a question, and that is, if we do not, if we do not, I'm sorry, if we do not in, uh, invite an interna international institution, then all this problem has to be kept in a domestic level. And let's imagine those domestic level in those domestic courts, all those all those panelists, all those judges. Or, so all within the perspective of their own countries, without the international perspective that can be provided by ICC as an international institution. So we think that this ICC international, international institution, even though it's not perfect, even though it's not 100% unbiased, but it's better Sorry. than the policy that we, already, that we are having now, and that is only depend on the domestic courts, the domestic laws. And second, and second, um, the only opposition said the best way to solve this, I'm sorry, to solve this problem is to give them a chance, is to give them a chance to communicate across this different religion. Yeah. And they think that this is the only way to, to, uh, for the mutual understanding. But however, one concern is that, I'm sorry, is hate speech really have the purpose of enhancing mutual understanding? The nature of the hate speech, especially on the issues of religion, is that one religion denies the existence, it denies the belief of another religion. So we said in this nature, it is impossible that those hate speech as a form of communication is really based on mutual understanding. So what we're seeing is this hate speech. Yeah. So that's, it's not based on mutual understanding, or mutual understanding, it has no mutual perspective. It, it has no mutual irrespective, so we don't see that hate speech is a form of communication that could solve the problem. I'm sorry. And the third thing is that the second speaker, the second speaker of the open opposition, says that uh, it's impossible to capture. It seems that this concern is about is really about feasibility. But however, the feasibility does not uh, does not just does not uh, undermine the justification. So let's look at what my partner has brought to you in this debate today. My partner has spent his time uh, talking about why this, uh, why this ICC will work. Because that we see that it's never, it's never possible to persuade a spiritual leader to, uh, to persuade them not to hate another religion. Yeah, this is already a fact. So the only way we solve this problem is that we use force. So we use force. We capture those uh, spiritual leaders who present this hate speech. Because we see that in this case, it must, it's, it's not possible to persuade uh, uh, people who have strong religious beliefs to totally abandon their original view. So in this, in this status quo, the most effective way is what we to capture. The religious, the religious leader, and this is why we think it's important. And another thing we have 
have to consider is that those people who present those religious, uh, those hate speech, they have power. They're not ordinary. They're just. They're not just ordinary people with religious belief, but they're the leader. Sometimes even a political leader of a country, which means they have military power, so they could be potentially dangerous. And that's why we see that we need to do something. We need to do something, and we think that the ICC institution is especially the best role, the best, the best entity, and the best way to solve the problem. And therefore, we are very glad to propose this policy. Should from closing opposition. And also, might I remind the debaters, you know, just keep it to a low. Like, imagine what would Jesus or Muhammad do in this situation. So calm down. All right, all good. Uh, Mr. Speaker, that we feel so uncomfortable about the last two speeches which is given by the government's lower house, right? We say that while they recognize that those leaders they're talking about are so powerful, so provoking, they have such a supporter or a disciple base, and they like they are so loyal to their leaders that they often are so irrational. They don't have self-control over themselves. That at the call of their leaders, at any like uh, the requirement of their leaders, they will do anything, even sacrifice their lives, go on the streets to demonstrate, go to riot, even form terrorist groups to support their leaders. If that is a kind of a spiritual control the leader has on his people, why their policy? Like, we don't want to persuade. We just want to capture them by force and lock them up and basically humiliate their leader. Why is this measure going to work positively on the group of people that actually firmly believe in this kind of religion or hold this belief? We don't believe that is good, the way. They are making things better. They have never proved to us why under their picture things are better. So, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, uh, some rebuttals. We say, we hear from the last speaker saying that when you are expressing your disbelief in God, when you are saying, I don't believe God exists, you are offending religious groups. We say that's just a difference of opinion. My belief is that I believe in scientific research, I believe in science, I don't believe God exists. That's my, my belief to uh, a voice. If you believe in Muhammad, if you believe in Jesus, that's your belief and you can also express it. That's why we say it's not the right way to suppress people and silence them instead of letting them communicate, let them hold on to their own belief. And the second we say, uh, they are trying to say that uh, this ICC, while not like making things perfect, they are making things better. So first of all, we do not know why under the picture things are better. And through the whole in time and government bench, they have never provided us a clear criteria that under the ICC model they are proposing, what's the criteria, like universal standard of hate speech you are going to impose to the whole world, and why is it justified? We see, as my partner in his extension very clearly pointed out, a healthy, very healthy joke in the United States might be something provoking, might be something disgusting in the Middle East. Yeah, yeah. And this is a cultural difference that cannot be solved by your model, by your principle. We see that it is because all those cultural differences and all those different understandings already exist that you have like some kind of forms of hate speech. It's not because the hate speech it, it itself is creating a lot of conflict oh, and all okay. those differences for you. So your policy is actually not solving the root of the problem, the difference of people's belief. You're actually trying to use like a radical behavior to make things worse, to create more conflict. As already pointed out by my partner's extension, why there will going there is going to be backlash. And before I move on, yes. Mr. Speaker, these spiritual leaders, they are so special because they're manipulating their people by speech but also starting conflict and wars continually which we cannot stop. Okay, sir, we understand your point, we understand your argument, but there are questions you have never answered. So first of all, as already pointed out by our upper house, the feasibility issue. This, you still did not give us the exact measures that ICC is going to take to capture those leaders. And while they are so powerful, why ICC does not have a military base or, or an army, standing army? Why they're going to fight against all those strong statesmen and capture them and like go against all their followers? And even if we agree that you can succeed like at last and then by whatever measure. So 
if you really capture those leaders and lock them up, do you really change their followers' loyalty to their leaders? Do you really change like uh, how they are going to like even when he is locked up, even when the leader, I don't know, well, like you are confined, and he's grounded in his house. He still has the void, like a, the channel to the outside world. He still has an image to show to the public. And while he still has this channel, have this chance, he's going to make use of that to tell his people, see, I am now like uh, protecting and defeating our belief. And now our enemy has arrested me, is going against me. This is the exact chance, exact moment for you to show your loyalty, to defend your belief. This is the moment you go on the street and form terrorist group and separate your fights to defend your belief. We see this is exactly what will happen under their model. See, ladies and gentlemen, basically in today's debate we have two clashes, right? First of all, why we believe that a single standard is not possible and the criteria that their model is trying to propose is never clear throughout the whole government bench. And second, we also believe that your model is not the best way to achieve closure and even it is a way to create more conflict and backlash. So for the first part, I have already like proved to you, especially in my partner's extension, why there are cultural differences in the world uh, in the world and they are like these differences are huge you cannot just ignore them if i tell a joke about sex in even in china in the united states it's quite it's like kind of healthy no one really just think <laughs> it's too disgusting or not okay but in muslim states the situations might be so different and you cannot have a single standard for that uh, and we we'll also say that it's up to the individual state to decide what is appropriate in their own country, right? You can regulate like the, the, the extent of freedom of speech in your own country because you know what your people think is acceptable, but you do not know what uh, people in other countries think is acceptable. And the second is the backlash we're talking about. So uh, the whole picture is already given out by the up lower house of government. Basically, we, they are so powerful, they are so like spiritual leaders that have loyalty of their fans, and we are going to capture them, lock them up, beat them up, and like humiliate them in front of their fans. And basically, all the consequences that I want to show you has already given out in their picture. So, ladies and gentlemen, based on all those, we believe that, uh, first of all, ICC is not International Chamber of Commerce. And even if it's International Chamber of Commerce, we do not understand that, like, look, like valid logic link between hate speech and efficiency of commerce and how the International Chamber of Commerce is going to achieve the, the goal they are trying to propose. And when we talk about International Criminal Court, we don't, do not believe International Criminal Court has the military force to achieve your goal. And we do not believe they can be fair, they can really create this universal standard for us. And third of all, we believe actually by using force, not persuasion, not peace talk and negotiation, you are creating more conflict, you are creating more radical behaviors and like actually go against the original goal you are trying to achieve. For all those reasons, we are so proud to oppose. I thank the uh, uh, This ends the debate. Thank you very much for the, the final debate. Debaters, you may cross the floor, shake hands up, leave this room, go have food, pray to Jesus, Buddha, Allah, Bob, the scientific turtle, I don't care. We'll announce the results of lunch. Be back by 12.30, please. Don't be late.